everybody. Welcome. It's time for Tech Talk here on VoiceOver Body Shop, where we talk about tech. And we've got some great stuff to talk about tonight, like... Oh, we talk about uh, do's and don'ts with using noise gates, for example. A new mic stand that stands on the floor, but you can shove in your bag. Ooh. The blue compass arm, watch out for using that with lightweight mics. I have a little audacity rant. And we, talk, talk, and we talk a little bit about our philosophy of... Home voiceover studios, along with some great questions on lots of cool stuff about mics and those sorts of things. Coming up next here on Voiceover Body Shop, Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. All right. And it's time now for Tech Talk here on VoiceOver Body Shop. And, uh, Lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight. I mean, you've got a couple of little items to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about our home voiceover studio philosophies. Okay. Just throw that in, in, into the wind and yeah. let's see what happens with that. And, of course, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room and we, we'll get to that. And we have a couple of questions. We want to get to those in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. But to start off with, I think one of the things that I hear a lot from people is how do I set a noise gate? And should you set mm. a noise gate? <laughs> uh, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so noise gates. Noise gates are, are incredibly powerful and incredibly destructive to your voiceover. <laughs> you can be, yeah. How you set them up. And, um, well, you're hearing one right now. We use, one, we use them quite heavily in our processing for this show because we've got a few mics open in a big open room. We've got an air conditioning system. We've got computers. It's it's a live on air studio. There's it's not a voiceover booth, so we're using them quite a lot here tonight, and they're very tricky to get set right. Um, if you don't have the, for example, well, well, let me tell you what one is. First of all, let's define what a noise gate is. Noise to gate is something that when the volume of the sound in the recording drops below a threshold. So whatever that is, and you a, decide a certain that sound is. level, right? Yeah. So if normally you're speaking at minus twelve, and you stop speaking, and the noise floor is say minus fifty, you want to have a threshold somewhere above that, so that when the sound drops down towards that, the volume can then be controlled by the gate. Yeah, and what you mean by below above that means below that, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because right. You, you were talking in negatives. Yes, we're talking. For those in of negatives. you who remember eighth grade math, yeah, your voice sound is here, your noise is here, and the gate is somewhere in between. That's the threshold setting. That's the trickiest part because where that somewhere in between needs to be is extremely critical. And what often happens is um, someone might get it all set up. They'll, they might maybe they'll have it on a DBX two eighty six channel strip, or, no! or they'll have it on their new fancy UAD console as a plug in. 
Um, and the thing is, it's very, very dependent on the input level. So if you set it up so at one day, the day you dial it in, your levels are coming in at, let's say, minus 8 or whatever. That's kind of where you're peaking. Um, and you set your noise gate. Well, guess what? If you come back next, another day and record with levels coming in around minus 12, the noise gate is going to start gating at the wrong time. And cutting up the beginning of words. Right, it's gonna, you're yeah. going to lose the Fs and it's going to be football instead of <laughs> football. In fact, even tonight, um, you know, Harlan was coming in on Zoom, and Zoom has trying to Zoom's whole thing is trying to make it clear. So there's tons of processing on Zoom, compression and gating, and and you could hear it doing what it does, which is chop off mm -hmm. bits of words. So be very, very conservative using a gate. Now, a gate shouldn't necessarily be an on and off situation either. So if your gate is just simply when it drops below the threshold, muting the audio definitely don't want that that is it, terrible you want it to drop the volume a certain percentage. yes yes you want it to reduce now you can do that with a ratio setting um and with a ratio setting do we have doll view working sue i don't remember I, we didn't get to test it before but if you see the twisted wave window give me a high sign if it's working um but uh with a threshold setting you have that control of, as to when it kicks in but with the ratio setting you have a control as to how much the volume is reduced and so I find that using it conservatively is a way to go, like a two to one ratio. That's is, what I use. Yeah, it works pretty well generally. If I ever need to. Yes. Yeah. Now the key is to get as low a noise floor as possible. Right. You want to do everything you can physically to get your noise floor under minus fifty to minus sixty or so. You sure? Because the to. quieter it is in the background, the more seamless a noise gate will be. Yeah. Another thing that's really helpful with a noise gate is, especially if you're working from the road is if your uh, room is very rumbly, or if you live in an apartment or a condo, your microphone's probably gonna pick up a lot of rumble. So it's really helpful to filter that out first using a high pass filter. That's just an EQ that takes everything below a frequency that you have to set out. Men, maybe 80 to 100, women, maybe 100 to 130, something in there. But then the noise gate doesn't get opened and closed constantly by that rumble, and that really helps too. Yeah. I have found, though, that a gate is not so important to use at all on stuff with very high dynamic range. Mm. Video games. Where you're know, yelling. Yeah, where and you're yelling and stuff. Why? Because in order to record that stuff without clipping, yeah. you have to set the gain a lot that lower. lower. You, know, yeah. you might have to lower it 10, 15 dB. Well, what that does is, guess what? It just lowered your noise floor 10 to 15 dB. Whatever you turn the gain down by, the noise floor drops by that much. So, you generally don't even need one. I yeah. found that when people send me files for that kind of work, I just turn off the gate completely because the noise that the mic's picking up now has been reduced so much right. because you've had to reduce the game. Right. Never a good thing to have it on a front end. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's really always risky. Do, do it in post. It, yeah. You know, use any plugins you have or, a, well, you're going to show it. Can we do we have DAW view here? So uh, what I was going to show you was, you know, what that threshold setting looks like. So obviously it depends on the software you're using. So if I record a little bit of audio, a little bit of audio, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Give it some silence. All right. And I do have some processing on the mic. Oh, so well. And the room tone. But if I check this area for the level, and uh, I'm just going to do, I don't have my keyboard shortcut set up, but if I go to File, Analyze, I'm going to see the level of my room tone is roughly minus 55 dB peak. So that would mean if I want to reduce that room tone, I'm going to load my... I'll, I'll put the plug in, in the window so you guys can see it, because right now it's off the screen. Let's go ahead. Now, the one that it comes with the uh, Apple system is called Dynamics Processor. It's not showing it, but... It's on the other window, which is now hidden behind a drop-down menu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> this this menu popped down, and now you cannot get to it. That's some software design for you right there. Maybe if I wait for a minute. Okay. If I sneak up really slow. Got it! Okay. I think that works. Still, still not seeing it. Still not seeing it? No. Right. Well, I think I have to reshare that window, because the scan converter wants to only show us one window at a time. Let's try... Nope. 
That ain't working either. Well, we gave it a shot. We'll fly this in later, maybe. <laughs> but the point being is that uh, a noise gate is very handy for reducing low frequency or very low level noise, but be very cautious on how you set it and use a more conservative ratio. And if you're using low gain for very high output recordings, like yelling, animation, maybe even some audiobook styles, you don't need it at all. Yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, what's up with Air Turn? Now, Air Turn had this thing where you could, it was a foot pedal that you yeah. could, would move your copy and stuff like that. Yeah. But they I mean, make we, new we, stuff now. Yeah, we discovered them at oh. NAM many years ago. No, before I, NAM. It was like at Voice 2010 or maybe. 12. Yeah. I mean, if, I don't know if anybody out there informally watching this use something called an Air Turn to read scripts. It's basically foot pedals you can use to change your script pages. I thought it was a cool idea, but I'm not a voice actor, so if anybody actually uses it for that, let us know. I did. When I was doing audiobooks, I'm like, I want one of those. Yeah. And it was very useful. Foot trigger page, change, page changes, and it's silent. No click. Um, but I just happened to notice that they make a portable uh, mic stand. Who knew? Um, and it's really cool because it folds up really small. It's, it's about 18 inches, so that would fit in most suitcases, some carry-on bags. But it folds up, it folds down as, as a portable stand, but you can actually fold it out to a full, like, 54 inches tall. It's pretty close to the, the size of a full-size mic stand. And that's pretty sweet. So if you really want to be able to work from the road, to have something that fits in your bag, but stands on the floor and still sturdy enough to hold a mic, that thing's cool. Always, it's just something to stumble on. Yeah, always best to have it on the floor, not on a desk. Definitely. This yeah. is why this is a really good idea. Cool. Um, in, the, in the world of Mike Arms, we talked about the Blue Compass. We saw it at NAM. Yep. Just a little warning about the Blue Compass arm. This thing was made really with the, the Blue Yeti mic in, in mind. And if you know what the Blue Yeti is, it looks like R2-D2. And it weighs as much as R2-D2 probably mm -hmm. does. It's very, very heavy microphone. And so that arm was designed to hold it. If you put lighter weight mics on it, like a Sennheiser 416, it doesn't want to, it tends to just go up in the air and just floats up to the, you know, its highest <laughs> setting. It does have controls to tighten it down, but you have to tighten them extremely hard. It can be difficult. So I would recommend putting some kind of an extra weight on it. Mm. Um, I used to know of a little brass weight that was designed specifically for that. Maybe you can get some fishing weights. Yeah. Or, you know? or, or the ABS that, uh, that Harlan makes. Oh, the boom strap. Yeah. Yeah, just strap that thing down. <laughs> Couldn't hurt. You could just put a strap between the end of the arm and the base, yeah. creating like a triangle just to, to hold it in place so it doesn't float. But just be warned, it's a great arm at a great price, but it can do that. Cool. Now, you have a problem with audacity? <sighs> audacity. So The audacity. They mean so well over at audacity. No, I mean, it's this is a software that's totally free, developed by a community of users and constantly is evolving, adding new features. The latest thing that we, you know, a lot of people were happy about was punch and roll. They have the ability now to not start recording on a new track every time you hit record, which is kind of nice. It makes it feel like other DAWs that are out there. Um, but something that, if this is an open letter to all the developers that happen to be watching this and working on Audacity, please do not arbitrarily change the name of either plugins or features in the software for just for arbitrary reasons. Maybe because you want to have a con more conventional naming system or something like that. Because what happens is uh, a lot of folks are using the software and then a feature that they were relying on, maybe in an Audacity chain, is renamed. And now every time that chain is loaded, that feature, high pass filter being the one I'm thinking of, no longer works. And basically everybody that has a chain with high pass filter has a broken chain. All because it was simply renamed. And, you could, know, have been, could have been somebody else was programming it that day. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Call Audacity it something different. is developed by a team of volunteers. And if you look at the credits, it's a huge, it's a list of names, and they all work on different things. So it's, it's really important to be aware of them when you're developing software. Do not change something that can break something else, because you get the domino effect right. that happens. And the other little thing is they change the name of chains to macros. And I was told why that happened, and the reason is totally sound. I totally get it. But again, now something that people were look, used to looking for is not there anymore, and a few other things about where the chains are located has moved. Things just have broken under the hood. And it's annoying to me as someone that sets them up for people and trains people because now every piece of training material I've ever done is now 
no longer accurate. And I have to redo everything and I have to reteach everybody how to use this feature. So please, when you make an awesome software like this and things are working, if you're going to add a new feature, just add a new feature. Don't wrap another one into it or rename the old one. I beg you, please. Okay. okay that's my audacity rant. Okay. I wasn't too nasty. Not too ranty. All right. I wanted them to listen. I don't want them to feel like I'm an enemy. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Just, yeah, I bet it's an, it's an open source thing. I mean, it's not it easy is. to communicate with them. It's probably, no. you know, a bunch of guys who speak various languages. There, there is a good Facebook group. Um, I don't remember who started it, but there's an Audacity Facebook group. I think it's for VO mm -hmm. specifically, but it doesn't matter. Um, and one of the developers in there uh, of Audacity is in there regularly. Oh, okay. So if you're looking to be able to communicate with somebody, it's a good place to go. Okay, good. Now, we got a few questions coming up, but I, mm -hmm. I wanted to briefly touch on something because, as you know, George and I are professional consultants and engineers that help you with your home studio. That's what we do. And it's amazing the stuff that we get is questions, I mean, on this show, and our inbox is always like, sure. oh, great. Or we go on social media, and there's several different forums, and people throw out this stuff, and... All these guys are experts in one studio, their own. Yeah. Uh, every voice is different. Every room is different. And everything responds differently. You really have to think about your own specific home studio. And what we try to do, and you can, you can add to this, we try to find out what works best for you. We ask the questions. How are you using this? What are you doing audiobooks? Are you doing commercials? Are you doing promo? Are you doing just e-learning and, and corporate narration? All of these factors go into how your studio works and how you're going to set it up. So we ask you these questions because the, the answers to those really give us the creative edge to do this. Because what we do, I mean, as voice actors, we're creators, but as people we are because we're the top two guys in this business to do this we're creative because we have to think everything that we know and yeah, rearrange and it, it fits into what they're doing that, what, what they're doing, doing which yeah. is you, you can't create something from nothing creativity is synthesis from everything we know and you're talking to guys here that have almost 50 years of experience doing this stuff combined not you know i mean i've been playing with microphones since i was a kid but yeah, you know <laughs> But what's your general philosophy of when, when you're, you look at a, at, a, at a fresh situation or somebody's already set something up and it just sounds like crap? Mm. Well, I mean, I, I get the equipment list. Right. I find out mm, about their space. Are they in a home? Are they in an apartment building? Are they working from a closet? I try to find out a little bit about the space they're dealing with. And we spend a lot of time focusing on that, the space, um, because that is the source of most of the problems. Um, it's much more rare that it's just like a technical flaw of the mic. Right. Like a very, buzz. Very rare that mics break. Or yeah, a yeah. thin sounding mic. Or It's very, very rare that just the mic is bad. I mean, that it happens, but less. maybe once a month is where I go, oh, your mic is screwed up, go buy a mic. It's so rare. Um, so we focus on that, very, very much focus on the room, the room, the room sound and the amount of noise and what can be fixed at the source and what can we then fix in software? Right. Some people, sometimes, sometimes people will order a, a Twisted Wave stack or chain, and when they send me the audio, if, it, if it's just like, okay, I can make it sound okay, but if you really would just pivot on this and fix a couple little things, like your mic placement, right? You know, that's going to make a big difference. That's a big thing, mic placement. The Absolutely. Distance of the, micro, the distance from the mic, huge. Right. Or, huge difference. Or how loud you talk. Yeah. I mean, it's it's amazing how the volume of your voice, how much you project, is determ is well, it's how it affects the acoustics in the room. Yeah. If you talk in a normal conversational tone, it's not going to reverberate as much. Yeah, the the louder you get, the more you project. Yeah. You know, the more you try to sound like an announcer, which a lot of people do. You know, and sometimes you're like, settle down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Know, that that affects the acoustics. Yeah. So, you know, so with me, it comes down to the acoustics of the room, how much sound is coming in, how much reflection there is, mic placement, mic technique, and setting proper levels. Yep. All that stuff before we even talk about the mic, the preamp, the converter, all the other stuff. All that stuff. It all comes fifth and sixth. Yeah. All right. So it must at least sound like we know what we're talking about. Uh, if you want to work with uh, either of us, uh, making sure that your home voiceover studio is sounding the way it's supposed to sound like, whistle, 
Um, you can work with me or George. If you want to work with George, you can work with either of us. You can work with both of us. But if you want to work with George, where do you go? You can head on over to georgethetech.com and you can schedule time one-on-one -on -one, or you can do flat rate services that you send your files and I send everything back. Call it virtual engineering. Get a sound check if you need to get your audio checked on and all sorts of stuff. Even designing a studio. It's all at georgethetech.com. And Dan also does tech support and helps you out. And he's available over at voiceoverstudio.com. Pretty easy to remember. Uh, you know, I've got a contact there. I love talking to you. We, uh, you know, I do consults. I will teach you how to do it. If you're here in the Los Angeles area, I will do a house call. Nothing better than sniffing around a, a somebody's apartment or a house saying, here's where you go. Here's how you do it. And getting them physically set up to do what they need to do to get their auditions out or do production work out of their house. And it's not hard, but you need to have somebody who really understands a home studio. Uh, it's a very different environment. And, you know, I've been spending years studying this and working with hundreds of people all over the world. And uh, mostly I love teaching and getting people to, to do it as easy as possible for them so they can concentrate on being voice actors and not on being audio engineers. So trot on by and you know, give me a buzz. Anyway, we got your questions coming up here on Voice Over Body Shop. So stay tuned or clicked in or whatever you call it on the internet. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about our great sponsors, Source Elements. Yep, you've heard of them, Source Elements. They make Source Connect, and that's a tool you need to have in your toolbox if you're a voice actor who's you know, really working at home, you're making a living now, you know, it's starting to go, you know, you're transitioning from, from being a part-time to full-time. Maybe you've landed an agent. Maybe you're joining the union. All these things, kind of stuff that says, I'm working at a higher level. Source Connect is definitely something you should have ready to go. Um, what's cool with Source Connect is you don't have to make any investment right now. You can get, go sign up, get, go through the hoops of setting it up. There's a few things to deal with with using an iLock account you don't need the iLock key but you have to have the account set up just a few things to to jump through and get it up and running but once you do just get the demo going you can get a 15 day free trial once you have it ready to go it's sitting on your machine it's installed you know it works you're comfortable with it then when the client comes and says you need to have source connect activate the license right on the spot you can do it online you can do a, a buyout license for one fee or you can do a monthly subscription type pay. Um, subscription means you get ongoing support and upgrades for the entire time you are a subscriber. So it's a pretty smart way to go. Um, anyway, if you want to go check them out, go to source-elements.com. Sign up to Source Connect. It's the best, most solid, most reliable, and best sounding way to connect your studio to other studios around the world. You should give them a try. All right, we'll be right back here with Tech Talk here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Stay tuned. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies. Because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Fabulous. Well, Harlan, it is always a pleasure to talk to you, whether in person or on our show here. And uh, thanks for the great deal. Once again, what's the big deal that you're, you're doing with the, uh, the okay. Porta Booths? If you order the Porta Booth Plus 4.0, the new one, 
because we have none of the old ones, believe me, I've got like one, uh, you will get free the carry-on travel booth bag. You can't beat that deal. All right, Harlan, thanks for being with us. Hey, thank you. You guys are great. All right, we appreciate you. And and thank you for being our sponsor for all these years. May you continue to do so for another 8 to 10 years. That would be great. All right, Harlan Hogan, everybody. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Welcome back to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. And we are talking tech for what the heck, because you guys might have questions for us, and we'd like to delve right into those. And let's go to our first question from Gwen Guerre. I'll bet I got that right. She says... Like the cheese? I, it's exactly how you spell the cheese. Good. But, all right. Anyway, how do you feel about dedicated electric outlets compared to regular electric outlets? Also, a, is a high-priced power conditioner... Does it add value to the signal chain? Thanks, guys, from Greenville, South Carolina. Hey, Greenville, I know people there. It's a great question because I think we probably both agree. You really need a power conditioner and to really clean, make sure the power is clean. And power conditioners are all over the map in terms yeah. of price and what they actually do. Right. And, do they protect you in a, a, a power surge? Do they have or? a surge protection? Most of them, most everything has some kind of surge protection, but in terms of a power conditioner i mean i have a story about a power conditioner i installed one very expensive one for don la fontaine many years ago yeah. thinking oh boy i hope this gets rid of the buzz i'm hearing every day when the lights start coming on in his house only to find out that that 1500 hundred dollar power conditioner did absolutely nothing because the source of the noise was actually the dimmers for the electronic dimmers for the house the uh, entire house wow we're directly behind his mixing console. Like, Oops. here's the wall. Here's the mixer. They were right there, but behind wood panels. I didn't realize they were there. Mm. And every day in the afternoon, the lights would start coming on in the house as it got dark. And bzz, the monitors start buzzing more and more and more. So it, it's not a fix-all, depending on the source of the noise. But clean power is always a good thing. I find rarely is it a, a game changer. Now, dedicated outlets is a whole different thing. Like, sometimes they call it hospital power. Right. If you're in a hospital, you'll see, you know, a socket on the wall and it's orange. And that's how they differentiate uh, the clean circuit that's not shared with the refrigerators and the air conditioning system and everything else. And traditionally, you'd, you'd put those in a recording studio also. Um, for a home studio? I don't know if a home studio needs that kind of stuff. I, when, I, when I design a studio from scratch, I will tell them, make sure the outlets in the studio are a dedicated circuit breaker that they're not plugged in it's not the same circuit as the refrigerator in the kitchen some basic stuff but um generally if you're using a nice simple home studio system with a mic an interface and a computer a good power bar a good power bar is probably really all you need yeah. you know it's yeah. not if, worth over investing if they only knew that all of this stuff this entire studio except for the lights is running off one outlet yeah. <laughs> but it yeah. goes into a power conditioner yeah. and and distributed that way and well that's important i mean if if you do have a lot of gear we have a lot of gear way more than a typical a studio you really do have to have everything come off one outlet because everything has to be from one point of ground right um that gets that creates all kinds of hum so if you have a computer in another room with you know a mic cord going through a hole in the wall and then you know you've got something else plugged in at the other end and they're on different outlets that's when you really cause problems. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep everything on one plug. Home studio gear is not going to blow any circuits. You're not drawing that much power. So, yeah, keep it simple. All right. Next question from Ed Michael. Love the show. Hey, hey that's awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, thanks for the continued support to the voiceover community. You're welcome. Uh, question. I am looking at upgrading my travel rig. I'm currently using Pro Tools in the studio. Okay. And I'm considering purchasing the Apollo Twin duo mark ii for travel my question is will it play nicely with the latest version of adobe audition cc um i've looked at the ua website doesn't say windows or mac mm-hmm. oh it does say it says i'm running a macbook oh thank you for reading <laughs> uh, i've looked 
It says at the end. Yeah. You mean the part that I'm supposed to keep reading to? <laughs> yeah. I've looked at the UA website about support about supported DAWs. However, Audition is not in their list. Um, will, I, will I be able to track in real time using their Unison plugins with no problems? Um, is it going to be problems? I'm using a MacBook on High Sierra. Um, yeah, I found that the list of DAWs, uh, digital audio workstation softwares that they list on the UA website is pretty limited mm -hmm. because they're, they're a bunch of music and audio engineering people and they're focused on software that's designed for that. So I love UA, but I hate that they give you this impression that their thing is not supported on Audition or Twisted Wave or Audacity or SoundForge. Like none of those softwares are on the list of approved programs, but I can rest assured all of them will work with Audacity, um, with, I'm sorry, with um, Apollo. They all will work with Apollo because I've set up the Apollo to work on every one of the DAWs that are out there at this point. Um, so you really should not have any trouble. And on Mac, it's even more trouble-free um, because on the Mac, the Apollo works just fine with web browsers, Chrome, IPDTL, Source Connect Now, Session Link, all the stuff that runs on Chrome works perfectly with the Apollo not so much on the Windows side. The Apollo team kind of punted on the Windows drivers. They're not that great. But on the uh, Mac side, it's it's rock solid. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a big fan of all these plugins that people are using. Because I get a lot of questions. you got to teach me how to use the plugins. FOMO. Why? Fear of missing out. Yeah. There's a lot of buzz about this stuff. People are like, ah, I got to have it. Yeah. People aren't getting work because they're using plugins. They're getting work because they're good voice actors. Yeah. And their sound is trouble-free as opposed to futzed together to sound better. And, you know, now you, you, you do the, the stacks with people, and those are for minor little corrections for maybe a little resonance in a room, mm -hmm. a slight adjustment for a microphone. Proximity effects. Uh, correct, th those sorts of things. But those are things that you can really deal with with technique. Um, you know, some people are in a situation where it's like, well, they have to do this because you live where you choose to live. Um, or they do affiliate stuff. Or, or absolutely. Traveling and they have to do it now. Right. No matter what. Now, right. now, now. And it's got to be a certain sound for affiliate work. Yeah. Or the, the big professional guys. If you're just doing auditioning, all these plugins Definitely do not change auditions. the way you perform copy, guys. Yeah. Uh, so stop looking at this guy. I want to learn how to use this. I want to learn how to use that. Fine. Go play with it. But it's not going to change your voiceover career unless you're doing full production. And that takes years to learn how to do. Yeah. So concentrate on your voiceover work. Yeah. All right. I mean, if, if, if it ends up in your arsenal, you couldn't resist, definitely give me a, give me a shout out. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I will get it up, set up properly for you the first time. Okay. Um, Kate Rowland has Rowland, a question. Huh? Okay. And she says uh, she loved the thing when we the went back. The Wayback Machine. The Wayback Machine when we <laughs> showed the first episode last week, which yes. was a lot of fun. It's like, my, we've come a long way. You know, one, we're in the same room, which is kind of cool. Uh, two, we can be in any booth we want, <laughs> as opposed to our, our, you know, your old office and my crappy studio uh, in the basement back in Buffalo. Bad. But oh, much bad. better, and out of focus and stuff. But yeah. that, that's here and there. She says her MacBook Air crashes when she has Twisted Wave open and disconnected her UR22 solution. <laughs> when in do reboot. I was going to say, <laughs> you go to the doctor and say, hey, Doc, when it hurts, when I do, do that. this. And the doctor don't, says, don't, don't do, do that. <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> so, I mean, why are you doing that? I mean, honestly, you, you don't want to unplug an interface that's in the middle of talking to a program like Twisted Wave. Okay, so it's just generally bad computer hygiene to do that. Okay, but if you have to do that for some reason, it shouldn't, it still shouldn't crash. Um, the Steinberg, that happens to be the Steinberg UR22, and I happen to know that Steinberg has their own sound drivers. That could be maybe part of the problem. They may have an updated driver for your system. Um, for a Mac. For a Mac, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah the, that's right. This, is is one driver. That, this one does need a driver for Mac, yeah. And it's, it's, we're used to that for Windows, but this one, there's a Mac driver. So go check and see if there's a new driver. I would do that first because that's, well, it's free to click away go to steinberg's website um if it's not that then i would say um make sure uh, i don't think twisted waves at fault here i don't think but make sure you're on the latest update it's 
21.6 or 7 or something there's, like that. There's a mismatch there somewhere. Something yeah. is not quite right. Ba- I, I don't know if it's a bad USB port, a bad USB cable. Try a different USB port on your MacBook Air. There's two, one on each side. Um, yeah, it, it could be a lot of different things, but I would start with the driver and just see if that if that helps. Yeah. Also, Some- load Audacity, free program. See if it, if happens it crashes with that. on Audacity. You know for sure it's not Twisted Wave. You can troubleshoot that way. And or try a different interface. Like That's a good reason to have a MicPort Pro or some extra... Have your, a backup. See if that t- changes it. Because yeah. if it does, then you'll it gives you a good clue as to what it is. And get a different brand, too. Like yeah. uh, The UR12 is great also, but it's the same driver, same brand. Try a get Focus a Focusrite right. or right. MicPort Pro right. or some other yes. thing. Yeah. This just in. Got an actual question on paper. Far out, man. Yeah, we can that it's on paper <laughs> um i have a friend it's it's from pilar who doesn't want to talk anymore i have a friend who travels with a different mic than the one she uses at home she does mm. eq on the recording to match her home mic what do you think not easy to do you gotta really ha- you have to really know what it's supposed to sound like uh you have to be in the same environment that's some serious engineering chops. yeah yeah if you don't know how to do it don't do it. Yeah, it's serious engineering. Shops, wait, wait. But, uh, I mean, uh, what? Pilar uh, actually now wants to chime in to tell us about her this. friend. <laughs> it is a friend. Okay. Actually, it is. Okay. So the reason I ask that is because I am trying to find ways to lighten my load. Yeah. And I have, so I travel with my Sennheiser. I have a Focusrite, a, a little iTrack solo. Mm-hmm. And the first time I traveled because I was really... Uh, freaked out about the doing something to the Sennheiser, so I traveled with the box that the Sennheiser comes in. Oh yeah, and the the MacBook Pro, and so this the MacBook Air, and it was oh. really really heavy. Yeah, so I wrapped it like a baby, mm-hmm. and I lightened that load. Um, but it's the whole thing is still heavy, mm-hmm. and so I'm tr- I was trying to find ways to kind of lessen it. And so I thought, well, maybe I could try. And the Sennheiser is not heavy. Um, and I was thinking, well, maybe I could use an iPad and use that as a control surface for Adobe Audition. And then maybe I could use, I know, exactly. Well, nothing, so. I, I'm telling you, there's nothing that sound, that's easier to use and more productive and just efficient, in my opinion, than a MacBook Air and the 416. Yeah. Because everything else is like, well, I need this, but then this doesn't work. Or I could use the iPad but then it doesn't run real mm. Twisted Wave, or it runs these iOS versions, which are annoying to use, or then I can't use a stack. Or the iPad Pro or the iPad weighs a half a pound less than a MacBook Air, and I don't have a keyboard. Like, there's every time I look at it, finding ways to like not have a MacBook, it just, the MacBook just seems to make sense. Especially, like, the, the MacBook, the 12, the little one, right. the 12-inch is... It's really light. Yeah. What and about a lighter, lighter audio interface, like a, the 875? Oh, yeah. A MicPort Pro or a mixer face or something yeah, like that? Yeah, MicPort Pros are super lightweight. Uh, there's not, I don't think there's anything smaller and lighter than a MicPort Pro. An 875R? Inter- that's a microphone. Yeah. That's this microphone, microphone over my head. The, there's another one that's not a MicPort Pro. Do you know what... Uh, Interface? Oh, oh the, uh, sure, the Sure, sure U2... X, that's X, it. X2U. That's yes, that's the one. I'm yeah, the X2U is similar. It's actually a little heavier than the... Oh, really? Like, I mean, we're talking yeah, ounces yeah, here, yeah, but... Not, yeah, it's, it's, it's not not. It's a little bit heavier, but it's about the same yeah, size. And they work the same, and they're both great. And yeah. They both go to 96K. Yeah. Why? You know, I guess if yeah. you're recording, you know, the Berlin Symphony or something like that, it might yeah. it might be useful to you. Um, yeah, no, it's... It, and it's hard to improve on it. I mean, I've seen people say, well, I got an iPhone and a Tascam uh, iX, so some kind of little plug-in mic, you know, a little tiny mic, you know, and they're like, look at this, it's amazing. Right. And yeah, that is like the perfect keep in your glove box, I'm in a pinch, I can't do anything else. But if you're really traveling, if you know you're going to be doing some work when you're on the road, um, a 416 into a MicPort Pro into a MacBook or some other laptop is, it's very hard to improve on that. Right. Stay as consistent have, as you can to make sure you can match the sound. Because when the iPads finally have a file system, good mini luck. rant, rant mode on, the iPad is an amazing piece of gear. The iPad Pro is really amazing. Apparently, it's so powerful, it's as powerful as many desktop computers. The iPad Pro is an unbelievable piece of gear. 
hindered by a horrible operating system called iOS. And it's so annoying because it, it could do so much. If the iOS 13 comes out or 14 or whatever comes out and has a file system finally, um, where you can say, the files are here, they need to go here, not the way that the iOS system works, it's going to be, that's going to be killer. And I'll be able to finally say, iPad, microphone, you're good to go. But um, we've only been saying that for eight years. I know, I've been waiting since the iPad came out for them to finally do this. I think a lot of people are too, especially the iPad Pro. Pro means I'm using it for professional use. And that means I need to have a file system. So when's that coming, Apple? Next version, maybe? Well, hope we'll so. see. All right. Oh, that's enough tech talk. That was, enough. That was a lot of good stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what this question. show is about. Great questions. You and Gao are all totally enlightened. Mm. And we'll be back to enlighten you with some final thoughts right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, if the words accent and dialect make you nervous or not even want to audition for a job, listen to what David H. Lawrence has to say. Once again, you can take the class with David for $300 off. Go to vo2gogo.com forward slash accents and drop his name in the comments. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected Respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders. When you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um, okay, who are our donors of the week? All righty, donors of the week. And I made up a list right here. Um, we've got donations from Antland Productions. Uncle Roy. Shauna Pennington Baird. Joseph Valentinetti. Valentinetti, sorry, Joseph. Uh, Stephanie Sutherland. Diana Birdsall. Petty Gibbons. Petty. Petty? Did I say Petty? Patty Gibbons. Patty Gibbons. Amanda Fellows. George Whittem. That's my dad. Uh, Shelly Avellino voiceovers. Thanks, Shelly. Uh, great seeing Shelly this weekend uh, in San Francisco. She's, oh, cool. She's the life of the party. She <laughs> goes way back with us. Thomas Pinto, Brian Page, Tremaine Mosley, Philip Sapir, CJ Ringwolf voiceovers, Sarah Borges, Michelle Blanker. Wasn't she the uh, winner of the yes, Unicorn she, Award? She was. She was. At VO Atlanta. Yeah. And a doctor voice. Thank you very doc, much. That's a a doctor lot. voice. A doctor voice. Yes, that's Nathan Carlson. Uh, I, I figured it was Dr. Carlson. <laughs> hey, show us your booths. Yeah. Who was this? This was uh, Jim Hawthorne or Mike Hawthorne. Mike Hawthorne. Sent it to us in landscape. It's a perfect portrait. example of what we look for for the show. We want to see what your booths look like. Yeah. And Twisted wave, it looks like. Uh, yeah. No, that's, that's audition. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's audition. I'm looking at the big audition. screen now. Yeah, that's audition. He's got the spectral view. Yep. 
What else is yeah. in there? And lots of foam, which Mackie, looks like an Iron Maiden. Mackie monitors. I uh, can't mm. quite see the mic, but... Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Very nice. All right, once again, you want to work with George, you go to... GeorgeTheTech.com. And if you want to work with me, go over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. But yeah, we talk to each other every now and again. Do we dare announce who's on next week? We do. Because, well, not next week, next week, but in two weeks. The next... Next live show. show, we will have David H. Lawrence, the 17th, will be joining us. And uh, he has lots of cool stuff to talk about. He's an entertaining guy. Entertaining, Smart, great actor. And a little scary looking. Uh, and that's the guys he plays on TV. <laughs> Uh, love you, David. That's right. Uh, let's see. Remember, we're on, on alternate Mondays. Now, we'll be on in two weeks. But we'll have Tech Talk on next week. Mm -hmm. The interview with Harlan all this week. And that's mm -hmm. that's important. Uh if you want to be in our studio, like lovely Pilar here is, just write to us at theguys at vobs.tv and tell us so. Da, da, da. Mm, there she is. Okay, look, at, look how comfortable she is. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Mm, VoiceOver Extra. Uh, source Elements. Video to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. Still also, sending us money. Because they like what we like what he does. He likes what we do. And you guys all love what he does. You guys must be telling him. You guys must be telling them where you're, where they're coming from, I know. because we, you know, if that's what you're doing, we appreciate it. Yes, yeah. that that really helps our sponsors stick around. I know. I just cut a new demo with Michael. Awesome. And it sounds awesome. What kind? What type? Stuff? And it's an announcer demo. No way. <laughs> way. Coming back to an, like you know. Well, it's back not, to your roots. They keep saying it's out. Well, it's, then it's a niche, so I might as well try and fill the niche. That's very good point. Yeah. And that was well, kind of like I think what, uh, Harlan. what what Harlan was talking yeah. about. Jack asked him about. Yeah. You know, if you stick around long enough and be good at something, it all comes back around. Boom. All righty. Yeah. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Mm -hmm. Our producer, Catherine Curtin, who's out for a little while. But, you know, we're making do for the time being. Mike Merlino on Chatroom Duty did a great job tonight. And, of course, his mom, who is our director, Sue Merlino, are Yay! doing a great job of making it all perfect tonight. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, join us every Monday or whatever you want because you can watch any episode anytime on our Facebook page, on YouTube, on just go to our homepage. It's and the all podcast there. version. And of course, which is now. Many of you listen on podcasts. Which is now on Spotify. We stuck it on there. I haven't even searched yet, but it's supposedly it's there. Okay. Look on your phone. While you wrap up the show, I'm going to look and search right now. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Thanks for joining us. And uh, Roar, this isn't an easy business. The technical part of it, we want to help it make it. We want to help make it seamless. So you just hit record because when it sounds good, it is good. All right. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VOBS. Yes. Bye. See you later. <laughs>